champion. Adam Stafford on behalf of the complainant Stacy Champion. Okay. Ms. Champion's complaint is not that APS violated decision 76295, but that the rates approved by that decision are not just and reasonable. But what is just and reasonable? The Arizona Supreme Court defines a reasonable rate as being one which is as fair as possible to all whose interests are involved. This requires the Commission to balance the effects of the rates on customers with the effects on the utility's owners. While the new rates have certainly benefited APS's owners, they are raking in massive profits. In the first quarter of this year, APS's parent company announced profits of $17.9 million, more than five times the $3.2 million profits earned in the first quarter of 2018. Just listen to their earning calls for the year. The rate review that culminated in decision 77270 confirmed what Ms. Champion showed in her complaint, namely that APS earned a higher than expected revenues due to its miscalculation of residential customers on demand rates, and that APS failed to explain changes to its adjuster mechanisms, as well as the 4.5% average bill increase would vary widely, extremely widely, due to the significant changes in the rate design a rate design that is geared to get residential customers on demand rates. This obfuscation and misrepresentation of what the 4.5% increase represented was fundamentally unfair to rate payers. So was the rate shock that APS's residential customers are still feeling. Consumers are struggling to pay their bills and were shut off for non-payment 105,206 times in 2018. We've heard APS talk about winners and losers when changes are made to rate design. The rate design approved by decision 76295 picked winners and losers. Some customers saw an increase of 95%, while others saw a decrease of, 81, of up to 81%. And now we know that at least two people lost their lives last summer because they could not afford to pay their power bills and APS shut off their electricity. How is this just and reasonable? Massive profits for APS on one hand, rate shock for residential customers, a record number of disconnections, and the deaths of two human beings because they couldn't pay their electric bills. These rates are not just and reasonable. Okay. These rates are not just and reasonable. They provide a windfall to APS at the expense of residential customers, some of whom paid the ultimate price. The Commission has the authority to rescind decision 76295. Monopolies are tolerated only because they are to be subject to vigilant and continuous regulation by the Corporation Commission. Now is the time for this Commission to act pursuant to ARS 40-252 and provide relief to APS's residential customers. <coughs> Don't leave ratepayers suffering under the current unjust and unreasonable rates while the rate case ordered by decision 77270 is litigated. If these rates can be deemed just and reasonable, then it looks like there's no such thing as unjust and unreasonable rates, at least as far as residential customers are concerned. <clears throat> so I started this petition 19 months ago. To date, more than 8,000 people have signed it. Numerous people have filed comments into the dockets. There was the rate review, which basically completely backed up everything that was determined within my five-day hearing in September. Um, I have sat and looked you all in the eye and said people are dying and I take it that now you actually believe me um, because there is obvious proof uh, I've said it to the media I'll say it now I think we're all naive if you believe that those are the only deaths or extreme injuries that have occurred from this um, I have brought up numerous times 
that uh, SRP customers spent $615 million less than APS customers in 2017. Uh, these rates, this complaint from day one was not about uh, how the settlement agreement happened. It is, are these rates just and reasonable? And, and again, And when you have that large of a difference, 81% uh, to 91% or whatever it is, 95%, it, like, I just, this whole process has been, um, quite frankly, disappointing. It has been mind-boggling to me. Um, everything from, you know, the, the disconnects getting pulled out, the the hoops I've had to jump through to get information that I am legally entitled to, much of which I still haven't received. I, I just, I would ask you, especially as elected officials, how do you expect the general public to have faith in this governing body if you don't have the, the spines to govern um, so much of what I've seen over all of these months of spending way too much time in this room with terrible lighting, by the way, uh, it, it, it leads me to ask the question, who the hell is running this place? Is it staff? Is it APS? Uh, is it staff and APS together? And so to hear, to hear this, commission say, you know, oh, we're worried about getting sued. Since when? Since when should a body such as yours be worried about litigation when it's done to protect the best interests of the public, including people who you know have lost their lives? Um, Stephanie Pullman lost her life over $51. Like, that is absolutely appalling. She was a mom. She was a grandmother. She had a cat named Coco. She liked flowers. I mean, th that is just wrong on so many levels. Don Brandt makes $51 every 30 seconds. Like, something is inherently wrong. And, you know, I don't know if anybody from this body has even asked the question of the attorney general's office like if we were sued for doing what is a, a constitutional right that has been done before many times um i know that there have been commissioners in the past who wouldn't even bat an eye over the fear of litigation if you're doing it to protect the best interests of the public, because that is your job. That is what you were elected to do. Um, and, and I want to say too that, um, you know, I, I know that you guys all probably feel like I just beat everybody up all the time. And, and I want to say like, I do appreciate when you make articulate arguments, um, the biomass thing, like I, I know that, um, there are probably more things that we agree on perhaps than even disagree on. And I appreciate articulate arguments. But when I think about, you know, even the, um, the rate review and the fact that, you know, and this was pre the, you know, exposure of Stephanie Pullman's death, you guys didn't ask them any questions. You didn't ask staff one question at all. Um, I have seen more reactive versus proactive behavior from this body, and it's truly disappointing. It really is. Um, I would like to have faith that you could see what is happening. You could look at the data that is out there and, you know, doing interviews the last couple of days, um, APS is still spinning out the four 
point whatever percent that they're saying and then saying the base rates. That means nothing to the general public. That means absolutely nothing. Staff's report, which um, I would love to see really what Overland gave them, which I haven't gotten yet, um, it, it delved into everything that was done wrong, the fact that people were extremely confused. If you're a senior on a fixed income, if you're a single mom, if you're, um, you know, many of the people across the state, state working three jobs just to get by, like you, you need to understand what you're going to see when you open up your bill. Like you have to know what, what to expect. And the general public was lied to in this situation. It was lied to by APS because of their massive shell game. It was lied to by this body because your p press releases said the same thing. And, and, it's, and it's wrong. And yes, there's gonna be a new rate case, but to put people through another you know, year to 18 months of not seeing any relief at all, when you have a tool that you can use and you can you know, have the cojones and the ovaries to frickin' stand up to this Goliath that appears to run you, even, even watching the demeanor over all of these months of just the, the expectations that no one is going to tell them no is appalling to me. And so I, I would just ask that you think about the massive amount of people who got terribly screwed over and who, who do not, did not see a $6 a month increase. I think there are, I mean, my gosh, like read the comments everywhere. I think that's fairy tale land. And you have the opportunity today to regain some trust of this, of the public in Arizona who rightfully so, um, you know, think that this is just a giant corrupt commission. And, and, because it's been behaving that way. And if you all don't reel in your staff, understand that like you're their boss, okay? They're not your boss. APS isn't your boss. You're the bosses. That's why the people of this state elected you. And so today you have an opportunity to regain some trust of this public to follow through on things that you said when you ran for office in the first place, to undo the damage that you did when you didn't ask questions in the, uh, straight out of the gate and voted yes on this, and to, and to Chairman Burns to not be worried about getting sued by a company right now that is looked at in the state like Darth Vader, okay? They've killed people. Where the hell is Don Brandt? Like this isn't, this isn't okay. Today you have an opportunity to assert yourselves and show this public that you're not owned by this utility monopoly. And that's all I think I have to say. Thank you. All right, any 